I was born in New London, Ohio, in a little hospital that's now shut down. I was born premature. My mother says they told us she wouldn't last through the night not to buy any little dresses. Isn't that horrible? My sister is about three years older, and I have a younger brother. My dad grew up in Eastern Kentucky. He was the 14th of 14. My mom was the 10th of 11. Her family, too, all came from Eastern Kentucky. And families have such secrets. So in a family that large, certainly there's got to be some secrets revealed via DNA. This morning, I keep joking, what am I about to find out? Who's my cousin? My journey to discover the secrets of my family's past begins on the road to my parents' house in Ohio, where I grew up. This is a house Robin lived in from the time she was about seven or eight years old. My dad thought he had moved into a castle. I remember him saying over and over, I never thought I'd have a home like this. She's expecting to come home today, do a DNA reading from Ancestry. I'm about to learn a whole lot more about my family, I hope. She has no uh, sense that we're leaving and going to Kentucky. We will be meeting up with family there. And we're here, this is the house I grew up in. Welcome home. Don't we all like good surprises? I think so. Love ya. Love you. How are you guys? Hey, baby. Oh, my Lord. Look at the pictures you guys have out. This is my mother and me when I was just an infant. That's amazing. And you could tell by the picture then how handsome I was going to grow up to be. <laughs> so my dad is a minister. He still is a fill-in minister to this day. But because he was a minister, you better believe, you know, my cheerleading skirts were checked for the height. We were not allowed to say darn because it's too close to damn. Maybe that's why I like to curse a little bit, a lot, now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to learning much of the genealogy in Mead family, and your dad is too, and uh, I'm looking forward to learning it in Kentucky. Learning it in Kentucky? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, a few minutes, we're going to be heading for Kentucky. Oh, you little stinkers. <laughs> we're, like, going to Kentucky? I thought you had a doctor's appointment. That's called a cover-up. My mom, she's no typical preacher's wife. She's funny. Well, I didn't pack anything. <laughs> I'll loan you my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> so are we going to play guitar? Let's do that in the van. Yeah. No, I'm not going to take the guitar with oh, me. Oh, I think you <laughs> I'm just a boy that my story seldom told. So my dad grew up in Hills, Kentucky. I'm talking about the poorest of the poor. Now, when, when I say poor, I think people might think about, oh, maybe you're on government help. I mean, these folks didn't have running water, I think, until my dad was in high school. Every picture you would see of my dad's family in the hills, it looks like 100 years before the actual date. But he left his home there in 1962 to find work in the Steel Belt. Now, this was common for people in the area. And we would go back to Kentucky several times a year to visit family members. Today, because of a twist in the story that my family threw at me, we're traveling the familiar highway once again. OK, we've got a real highway going on here. I'm excited. <laughs> Mom and Dad organized a family get-together this evening at a local hot spot near the ancestral home. Come on. Tonight, we reconnect with loved ones, like 95-year-old Anna Stell, the oldest living Mead. Whatever secrets our family holds, they don't tell us that until tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm told, will bring with it some astonishing family revelations. So Robin, I am Michelle with Ancestry, and we are in McGoffin County, Kentucky. And we've got a story that we want to tell about this region in Kentucky. But first, I want to walk you through your Ancestry DNA results. Woohoo! How much Neanderthal? <laughs> I'm just joking. OK, <laughs> <laughs> like, mm. so right off the bat, 97% European. Okay. That um, part I got. 2% South Asian. Wow! Oh. That's um, India, Pakistan. India, Pakistan, Nepal. OK, less than 1% Mali, which is Western Africa. That's amazing. So when we look at the European results, your largest percentage is Great Britain, 58%. You were right on with the Scotland, Welsh thinking that is what you are predominantly. A lot of the people that came to Appalachia were the Highlanders from Scotland. We're talking about pre-revolutionary war, um, and at the time, the western wild frontier for the colonies was Kentucky, Appalachia. 
you have what's called a genetic community that is the settlers of the big sandy basin i'm not surprised <laughs> your roots in kentucky are likely very deep and we have a story that we want to share with you actually about the meat side of your family okay in order to do that we want to walk where they walked let's go so robin we are at half mountain in mcguffin county kentucky these very same hills served as the setting of a fierce fight. And get this, Michelle discovered an incredible connection between my second great grandfather, Rhodes W. Meade, and that battle. Rhodes was one of five brothers who all fought in the Civil War, two for the Confederacy, three for the Union. Rhodes W. and his brother Robert served in the Union Kentucky 39th. On April 14th, 1864, the 39th descended right here on a group of Confederate soldiers and crushed them in the Battle of Half Mountain. Their own brother, McDonald, served in the Kentucky 10th Cavalry, who were part of that group camped here. We talk about the Civil War being brother against brother. Your family is the perfect microcosm of what that conflict was. But records reveal McDonald deserted his post just before the battle. He deserted in March of 1864. Did McDonald know a face-to-face -face battle with his own brothers was imminent? Did Robert and Rhodes wonder if their brother was among the Confederates they were fighting? It speaks to the bitter divisions the war brought to Kentucky, as well as many of its families. Within two months of this, McDonald enlisted for the Union and joined the same regiment as his two younger brothers. All the brothers eventually were on the same side, a fact that must have relieved their preacher father, Rhodes Sr. We are in an historic church building at the McGoffin County Historical Society, and we're here to learn more about the father of the five Civil War soldiers whose name was Rhodes Meade Sr. And he was a Congregationalist Baptist minister. But I'm actually gonna let your cousin tell you a little bit more about him. Hey there, Robin, or should I say Cousin Robin. I'm just finding this out too, just so you know. Apparently, you and I share a third great-granddad from back in the hollers of Eastern Kentucky, which makes us fourth cousins. Are you freaking out? I'm freaking out right now. I'm freaking out! So we're family, so I guess the family reunion's in order. <laughs> That's so easy! Look at you. Oh my gosh. Blake, hey, it's nice to know that we're, we're family members. I had no idea that you had that Kentucky connection. As for my Kentucky connection, I couldn't wrap up the trip until I went to the old holler where my dad grew up and attended school right here in this three room building on the banks of Little Mug Creek. This is the first time I've been inside this building since I graduated from eighth grade. This seemed like the perfect place to learn a little more about my dad's childhood. It was a completely different life. He did it like a half circle. What? We didn't have doctors. My father never knew what insurance was. My father wore something just like that. My birth certificate is signed by the lady that delivered me. I didn't approach the opposite sex. Uh, didn't have any way even to if I get to get a girlfriend, there's no way to take her anywhere, you know. I'm sure they didn't want to ride a mule. <laughs> <laughs> As I look back, it's all fond memories to me, and I'm glad that I grew up here in Eastern Kentucky. I appreciate the things of life. I wonder if that little kid, what he would think today, if he could give us a glimpse into what you would do. Mm -hmm. I've been asked that numerous times. Did you ever think that you would have a daughter that is a celebrity? No. You just live, you know? Those things happen. Now that we've come back and, and did a visit all together, <clears throat> are you happy you took that highway? Oh, yeah. I met my wife and raised my beautiful children. Well, I'm glad you took that highway. Now what are we gonna do? <laughs> now that I've walked in the footprints of my ancestors from the cemetery in the holler to the battlefields of Half Mountain, 
I'm even more grateful for the Meads I know, who have always been rich with love. Oh, and for the Meads planning the family reunion, don't forget to invite the newbie.